welcome to Digital Pill. My name's Doug DeVries, and that was a piece of uh, music that I wrote some years ago. Uh, it's a kind of like an Argentinian tango style, and it's called Astoria. And it's uh, a piece of music we're going to explore uh, today uh, to help you learn ways of gilding the lily on the guitar. We have uh, really a simple chord progression of six chords. Uh, well, I like three chord songs too, but I think six chords, it's not a big stretch. Uh, so come with me and we'll look at the chords of this uh, piece. Uh, if you're like me and you learnt guitar uh, playing chords only uh, for, for a number of years uh, out of a chord book, uh, you can quickly learn the, the basic structure of this music. We have E minor, we have B7, we have D minor, we have A major, A minor. Back to E minor, F sharp 7, practice your bar chords, and B7. What I'm going to demonstrate is how to thread a line through a, a chord progression like that. Because when we play uh, chords on the guitar, sometimes the line is obscured. Uh, uh, so when I uh, learn uh, a song with a series of chords, I try to look for these lines. And here's a line that's uh, particularly uh, prominent. From the E minor, we take E. From the B7, we highlight the D sharp. From the D minor, we highlight D. And from the A, we highlight C sharp. Okay, so you'll notice I've taken C sharp from the higher register, put it in the lower register, because I want to make this line continuous. Then from A major to A minor, and then I keep going down, and notice that it just goes step by step, and then I reach A sharp, which is part of the structure of F sharp 7. Again, I've taken the A sharp and moved it down to the lower register. And then we move back to B7. So here's the line on, it, on its own. You'll notice that by accommodating the line that goes through the chords, we have to alter the, the chord shapes themselves. Because unfortunately, the guitar, there's not a one uh, shape that uh, serves all purposes. And one of the interesting things about the guitar is that you can play an E minor in so many different ways. Just for starters. So uh, when we uh, talk about chords, we need to know what's making up the chords. Now, we, we're not going to go deeply into this. We're just going to assume that, yes, you know that a chord is made up of three or four notes, and they can be distributed all around the guitar. So what I've done is altered the shapes of, of the chords. Instead of E minor like this, we're now here because I want this line at the bottom. Now I can construct the B7 chord around that basis of that D sharp on the bottom, and the rest of the notes, the A, the B, and the, and the F sharp. Then we move on to the D minor. Uh, now I've added color to the D minor by putting in a color tone. Here's an original D minor, but I craved more color for this chord progression, and I came up with a D minor with an added sixth. Also, when I got to the A, I added a ninth for color. Now as you get more experienced with uh, manipulating the voices, that is the notes of the chords on the guitar, you too can uh, discover new worlds and new ways to gild the lily because it's really the same progression being used over and over. So when I play this, is the theme, essentially. Uh, it is the same chord progression as we discussed. And I think you can hear that quite clearly. You 
hear the line moving down? I'll continue. So that's the left hand uh, fretting the chords. Now, with the right hand, uh, let's talk a bit about the right hand. Uh, I like to use uh, the thumb and three fingers of the right hand. Uh, I did learn to play with a plectrum like most people who grow up in Australia. Uh, that's very good. But when you've got four picks you can use, the thumb and three fingers, uh, I, I see it as an advantage. So it's worth practicing even if at first it feels a little awkward. I rarely use the little finger. So uh, it's because, it, as you can see, it's, it's much shorter than the other ones and it uh, causes an awkward uh, hand position. So first of all, uh, the thumb plays the, the bass notes and the remaining three fingers, the other notes. So going back to our chord progression. So essentially I assign a finger to each string. They're the top three strings and then the thumb. Practice also uh, playing them together. And then we can play all kinds of rhythms once we get used to using the fingers in this way. It's not so hard. We don't have to really touch on classical guitar. It's really just executing the chords. Uh, and it's far more flexible than a plectrum. Uh, to play a, a new tango or tango nuevo type of rhythm, it simply goes like this. <laughs> Also, you can, you can hit the guitar uh, and the strings uh, like I did towards the end. It's not a problem. Uh, you don't have to worry. Classical guitar players tend to get uh, overly concerned with clarity and being very tidy. But uh, the Argentinian style and Brazilian style, which I'll touch on later, uh, is a lot more uh, natural. And you can uh, use the percussive features of the guitar by touching the, the strings. So once again... Uh, Maybe I'll do this uh, alternative progression. <laughs> okay, another variation on the same theme. This time I've filled out the whole rhythm. Uh, rather than umpa, 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 da, umpa, da, umpa. So notice the thumb. Thumb marking out the rhythm. Play around with the voices, play around with the rhythm, use your fingers, and enjoy yourself. Thanks very much. I'm Doug DeVries. Thanks for listening, and visit digitalpill.com. TV.